Thank you, Chairman, Jane Forbes Clark, President Jeff Idelson, and other distinguished guests, and the members of Baseball's Hall of Fame. Thank you for allowing me to share this stage with you this day. I've been blessed in many ways, and I need to share for a moment the names of some of those people who have helped me, starting with Frank Soden in Richmond, Virginia, who gave me my first baseball job, along with John McHale, who hired me to go to Montreal, David Dombrowski, who paved the way for me to move on to Florida, and Jeffrey Loria, who's allowed me to continue my career. My partners, Russ Taylor in Montreal, Don Drysdale, Pee Wee Reese, Duke Snyder, Duke and I were in the booth for 15 years. How could I fail with help like that? For seven wonderful years, Ken Singleton was at my side in the booth. Tommy Hutton, John Shambi, my current partner, Glenn Geffner. I've had a wonderful partnership with all of them and others over the 43 years. So you see, I have had plenty of help along the way. As reluctant as they'll be to do this, I want for just a moment for you to see my wife, Jose, my daughter, Madison, my sons, Jim, Chip, Jeff, and Dwayne, my brother, Alan, my in-laws, daughter-in-laws, grandchildren, nieces and nephews, my life support system. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to be with you today in the presence of these immortals here on this stage, on this field where legend tells us that baseball was born, and in this wonderful village, Cooperstown, where the game, its greatest players, and its greatest moments live forever. As one who is blessed to have spent the last 43 years talking baseball, telling stories and trying to paint pictures, you'd think the words would come a little more easy. They don't. However, one word does come to mind for me, and that is magic. I recognize magic because I've described a lot of it for 43 years. I was there for the birth of the Montreal franchise, April 8, 1969. A gray spring day at Shea Stadium, but sunlit across Canada. With apologies, Tom Seaver, Expos 11, Mets 10. <laughs> Being an American, I was new to Montreal, but how could you not be moved hearing O Canada for the first time in a major league ballpark to look through my binoculars and see tears streaming down the faces of Charles Bronfman, the owner, and Mayor Jean Drapeau of Montreal, seated in the box seats. It was obvious to me what that moment meant to all of Canada. It was magic. Nine days later, I was sitting in the broadcast booth at Connie Mack Stadium, and I was broadcasting Bill Stoneman's no-hitter nine days into my rookie season. That was magic, too, and one of the first hints that nothing would be dull in my 32 years with the Expos. I was there for the start of many careers, including some of the men on the stage behind me. The Hawk, Andre Dawson. One who can't be here today, but I know is in all of our hearts, thoughts, and prayers, Gary Carter. And I got to see Tony Perez in the Montreal uniform. Willie Mays made a lot of magic. I was there to describe his 3,000th hit. 20 years later, yours too, Tony Gwynn. I was at the mic the night Nolan Ryan became the all-time strikeout king, and I was there for Steve Carlton's 4,000th strikeout. I was fortunate enough to be there for the Marlins' incredible run to a World Series championship in 2003. The dramatic division series against the Giants, the unforgettable seven-game National League Championship Series against the Cubs, and that World Series and the win in Yankee Stadium. That's magic. I've called the magic of 11 no-hitters, including three perfect games. It's not just about the great moments, though. And that's one thing that sets baseball apart. The game itself is magic. You never know what you're going to see every time you go to a game, from little leaguers who dream of the big leagues every night all the way to the players in the show, where the greatest players play the hardest game to play and so often make the remarkable look so easy. Baseball itself 
is magic. For me, there's always been something special about baseball on the radio. I was eight or nine years old when I began to listen to buy some call games in Philadelphia. They called by the man of a zillion words. Season after season, I hung on every one of them. There were days in the fall I'd sneak a small transistor off to Washington Elementary School to listen to a big game or a World Series game. But you know what? My fifth grade teacher, Mr. Lapp, he did the same thing. That's the magic of baseball on the radio. I got to hear Mel Allen in the fall. That was magic. Mel didn't know it, neither did By Som or Gene Kelly or Chuck Thompson or Bill Campbell or any of the other great voices I heard as a kid. How could they have known it at the time? But their descriptions and their catchphrases, By Som saying, rolling along, Mel's, how about that? They all opened up a whole new world for me growing up, listening intently, whether it was in the backyard, at a cookout, in the car, at the beach, catching, playing catch with a friend, or maybe riding along on a summer trip. When I broke into the baseball business on radio, I began to pay close attention to the tempo and pace of those play-by-play -play men. In Virginia, I got to hear the great Frank Messer, Chuck Thompson in Baltimore. Both those voices made an impact on me. If you grew up listening to Ernie Harwell or Vin Scully, you understand what I mean. These voices inspired me and impacted my voice. I didn't begin broadcasting baseball because I thought one day that I'd bring that kind of joy or have that impact on anyone else. But after a while, when people told me that they had me in their homes, in their backyards, at barbecues, at the beach, or in the car, well, they never knew how much that would mean to me. That's the magic of baseball on the radio, the soundtrack of our summers. Television is dominant now. But we all cherish the famous images of the game and can recite the words that came over the radio. When Bobby Thompson launched that shot heard round the world, Russ Hodges told us, the Giants win the pennant, the Giants win the pennant. We see Al Gianfrido's catch to Rob Joe DiMaggio, and we can hear Red Barber's back, 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 back. 1974, Hank Aaron rounded the bases. We see him and we hear Milo Hamilton tell us, there's a new home run champion of all time, and it's Henry Aaron. Kurt Gibson hit his unlikely home run in game one of the 88 World Series. Sorry, Eck. <laughs> Jack Buck told us, I don't believe what I just saw. Neither did we. And if you were listening on the radio that night, you didn't see it with your own eyes. But thanks to Jack Buck, you felt as though you did. I'm humbled and grateful for this honor. Thank you.